Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson on radiographic anatomy demonstrated on routine projections of the knee and patella. In a previous lesson, we discussed the anatomy of the knee and patella and which radiographic projections are routinely performed. So let's tie that information to the radiographs themselves. As a reminder, the routine radiographic projections of the knee are AP, medial oblique, lateral oblique, and lateral. Take a look at this radiograph. What projection is being demonstrated? How do you know? Let's find out the answers to these questions. If you said this radiograph is an AP projection of the knee, you're correct. We can tell this is an AP because the distal femur and proximal tibia and fibula are shown. The femorotibial joint space is open, with the articular facets of the tibia seen on end, with only minimal surface area visualized. It is a true AP with no rotation, as evidenced by symmetric appearance of femoral and tibial condyles in the joint space. The medial half of the fibular head is superimposed by the tibia, and the intercondylar eminence is seen in the center of the intercondylar fossa. Can you identify the anatomy? Working from superior to inferior, we can clearly identify the distal femur, medial and lateral femoral epicondyles and condyles, patella, femorotibial joint space, articulating facets of the tibia or tibial plateaus, medial and lateral tibial condyles, intercondylar eminence, shaft of the tibia, and head and shaft of the fibula. Which oblique projection of the knee is being demonstrated in this radiograph? How do you know? This is a medial or internal oblique projection of the knee. For this projection, the distal femur and proximal tibia and fibula should again be visible, along with the patella superimposing the medial femoral condyle. The lateral condyles of the femur and tibia should be well demonstrated, and the medial and lateral knee joint spaces will appear unequal. One main distinguishing feature of the medial oblique is the open proximal tibiofibular joint space. Let's identify the anatomy from superior to inferior. Distal femur, patella, medial femoral condyle, lateral femoral condyle, lateral condyle of the tibia, proximal tibiofibular joint, head of the fibula, neck of the fibula, and proximal tibia. Can you tell what projection of the knee is being demonstrated here? Did you say lateral oblique projection of the knee? Let's find out how we can tell it has external rotation. Like the other projections, the distal femur and proximal tibia and fibula are demonstrated, but this time, the patella is superimposing the lateral femoral condyle, and the medial condyles of the femur and tibia are shown in profile. Also, in this projection, the proximal fibula should be superimposed by the proximal tibia. Let's identify the anatomy in this image. From superior to inferior, we see the distal femur, patella, lateral femoral condyle, medial femoral condyle, medial condyle of the tibia, superimposed fibular head and neck, and proximal tibia. We have one final projection for the knee. Can you guess what it is? Yes, this is a lateral projection. We can tell it is lateral because the distal femur Proximal tibia and fibula and patella are all demonstrated in lateral profile, and the patellofemoral and knee joints are open. We know this is a true lateral because the posterior borders of the femoral condyles are directly superimposed, and the fibular head is slightly superimposed by the proximal tibia. As a reminder, the lateral knee is a medial lateral projection. Looking again from superior to inferior, the following anatomy is demonstrated in this projection. Distal femur, superimposed medial and lateral femoral condyles, open patellofemoral joint, intercondylar eminence, fibular head slightly superimposed by the tibia, tibial tuberosity, proximal tibia, and proximal fibula. Before we move to the patella, we should discuss how to recognize under and over rotation in a lateral knee, because this is a common error, and it can be difficult to determine how to correct the problem. In the first image, the patient is under-rotated, but how can we tell? The key anatomy to locate to determine the positioning error is the anterior surface of the medial condyle, shown here, and the placement of the head of the fibula, here. If the anterior surface of the medial condyle is farther from the patella, and the fibular head has minimal or no superimposition by the tibia, the knee is too far from the image receptor, 
and must be rotated externally more. In this image, the knee is over-rotated. Again, if we look at the anterior surface of the medial condyle and the fibular head, this time we see the medial condyle is closer to the patella, and the fibular head is almost entirely superimposed by the tibia. This means the knee is too close to the image receptor and must be rotated internally to be in a true lateral. Now let's move on to the patella. As a reminder, the routine radiographic projections of the patella are PA, lateral, and tangential. Let's start with the PA. The knee joint and patella are demonstrated in a true PA as evidenced by the symmetric appearance of the condyles and centered patella. There is also optimal recorded detail of the patella in this view because of the decreased OID of the PA projection. Let's identify the anatomy of the patella and look at the difference between an AP and PA projection. Here we see the base and apex of the patella. Also, notice the symmetrical condyles and center placement of the patella. If we look at the patella on the AP knee radiograph from earlier, beside this PA patella radiograph, we can see the size distortion and the lack of bony detail of the magnified patella on the AP knee radiograph because of the increased OID between the patella and the image receptor. The next projection in the patella series is the lateral. Like the knee, this is a medial lateral projection. The evaluation criteria for this projection is also similar to the lateral knee. The patella, open patellofemoral joint, and femorotibial joint should be demonstrated in profile, with direct superimposition of the medial and lateral femoral condyles to represent a true lateral. On this projection, we can again identify the base and apex of the patella, open patellofemoral joint, and superimposed medial and lateral femoral condyles. Finally, we have the tangential projection of the patella. This is also known as the axial, sunrise, or skyline projection of the patella. There are various methods to achieve this projection. However, the resulting image should be the same or very similar. The goal of this projection is to demonstrate the intercondylar sulcus and patellofemoral joint space. The image shown here is the result of the Setagas method. The tangential projection of the patella should demonstrate the intercondylar sulcus, also known as the trochlear groove, and patella in profile with an open patellofemoral joint space. Let's identify the anatomy of this image. Superior to inferior on this image, we see the anterior surface of the patella, articular surface of the patella, lateral femoral condyle, intercondylar sulcus, and medial femoral condyle. In summary, the routine radiographic projections of the knee are AP, medial oblique, lateral oblique, and lateral. And routine radiographic projections of the patella include the PA, lateral, and tangential. Obtaining clear diagnostic quality images of the knee and patella can help identify fractures and other pathologic conditions related to the knee, patella, and related joints. Identifying and recognizing the relevant anatomy is the first step in ensuring the evaluation criteria are met.